going on guys Orm Swarm coming at you guys today again with another video and uh, we're gonna be talking about our running back situation now we all know who DeAndre Swift is man we drafted him last year in the second round 2020 round two at pick 35 out of Georgia 5'9 215 pounds now pretty much drafted to be the number one guy as uh, Bob Quinn and probably Patricia were getting a little bit tired of uh, the injuries to carry on Johnson, which makes complete sense if you think about it, right? Now, when they drafted DeAndre Swift, I, I had a comparison on him as uh, kind of like an Elvin, Elvin Kamara type running back out of uh, New Orleans. Now, I'm not saying he's Elvin Kamara, but he just he, he reminds me of, of Elvin Kamara. Shifty, great out of the backfield, patient, good vision, burst, uh, can make you miss. You know, he makes that first guy miss. Just everything you kind of want in a running back, right? Uh, still needs to work on some of his blocking skills, but um, he's not really here to block. Uh, he's he's more of a threat, you, you know what I mean? To wherever he touches the ball, he's a threat to go to distance. So it kind of reminds me of an Elvin, Elvin Kamara type running back. Now, wasn't utilized right away off the jump. Um, took a boat. I think he didn't get a start until week six against Jacksonville. Um... We all know he had that one game against Chicago. He was actually playing a pretty decent game. He had a, he had a, he had a touchdown in that game early. Um, Lions were down. Matthew Stafford in Matthew Stafford fashion with that offense. Drove all the way down at the, to the, end of the, uh, at the end of the game in the fourth quarter. Got the Lions all the way down. He threw a beautiful ball to DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift drops it. Drops a game-winning touchdown. Now, this is a guy that didn't drop any balls in college a year before. I think he was a perfect, however many balls he caught in college uh, 2019, um, he caught every single ball that was thrown to him that was catchable. Now, he has great hands, but he ended up dropping that ball. He ended up dropping maybe a few more during the year. I think he had five or six drops. He had a few. Um, but after that, you could tell that he was kind of put in the doghouse by Bevel, Patricia, whoever. is probably Patricia. Who knows? But um, he didn't really get utilized or used that much of him all the way. Um, they used him sparingly, but I think even like a week three. It might have even been, I think, against Arizona where he wasn't even used at all. I don't think he even got any stats. I think I'm pretty sure it was week three, week four. I have to double check that. I didn't write that down. But he was a guy that I think was put in a doghouse. I, I honestly do. Even though he was a rookie, they kind of treated him with kid gloves, this and that. You know what I mean? But... I personally think he was thrown in the doghouse by Bevel or Patricia, whoever it was, and and it was wrong. So he finally get, he finally got out of the doghouse and got a start uh, against against Jacksonville and went off over 100 yards, touchdowns, did everything great. He, he did everything great, and he's kind of kind of from there. It was kind of his backfield for the rest of the year. Um, it, it even went as far as Adrian Peterson going on Twitter and saying it's about time. You know what I mean? Like it's about time you use this kid. It's about time he started. And that's and that's awesome coming from the Hall of Famer Adrian Peterson. So um, even he knew. You know what I mean? Like he, well, he would know, but uh, he would know more than any of us if that kid should be starting. And DeAndre said probably should have. You know, maybe maybe the first couple games not start. Whatever one or two games, but they drafted him for a reason to be the guy. And he was a clear cut better talent than Carry On Johnson, and he's probably. He's electric, so it, 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 it took him too long. That's what I'm trying to get at. It just took these guys too long to figure it out. But he ended up with 521 yards, 4.6 average yards per carry, and eight touchdowns. He also caught 46 balls for 357 yards and a couple touchdowns as well through the air. Ten touchdowns total. He had a few fumbles, lost two. So he didn't really have too much trouble with ball security. Um, I think I think a little bit down the stretch he lost a couple balls late late in the year, but maybe that had to do with fatigue. Who knows? But I'm sure he'll come back stronger and better. Now I'm looking for that number two guy. This is what this this is kind of. We already know DeAndre Swift is the guy. Okay, DeAndre Swift is the guy. Carry on Johnson won't be the guy. Peterson isn't here. Jason Kambinda is a fullback. We had a guy named Jordan Scarlett on the team, but he ended up getting picked up by Miami Dolphins. So we don't really have a number two. And it's in, in my opinion, it's not carry on Johnson. Now, 
the days of the workhorse running back is pretty much over, I think, personally. And I think everybody can kind of agree with that. Yes, I want to see DeAndre Swift get more touches. And yes, the coaches have even talked about DeAndre Swift getting more touches. That's inevitable. That's going to happen. We already know that. But he needs that Robin to his Batman. You know what I mean? He, he, he needs that. So, like I said, Swift, Cabinda, Carrion Johnson, not options. Scarlet gone. Okay? And I don't trust KJ to be the number two. Now, KJ ran for 181 yards and two touchdowns on a 3.5 average. Caught 18 passes for 187 yards and a touchdown. Three touchdowns on the year. His first time being available for 16 games in his young career. He has missed over four. He has missed 14 games in three years. So that's not good right there. He was demoted to the number three and became a blocking back. He did catch 11 passes for first down, for first downs, though tying his rookie record, tying his rookie year. So he did he did bring a little bit of value in that way, but he doesn't scare anybody. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm trying to get at. So who's going to step in and be that Robin to Swift, like I alluded before? Free agency, the draft. I have a few guys in mind. I do. I I, I do have a few guys in mind. Now, some of these guys probably won't be available. Some of these guys are probably going to be too expensive, but we're going to see. Now, free agent Kenyon Drake. Market value is around $8 million plus. He'll probably want to be a feature back. Catches the ball pretty well, too. He's probably going to be a little bit too, too expensive. Kind of had a down year. He was just under 1,000 yards rushing, though. He did have 10 touchdowns on the ground. So his season wasn't completely lost, but he is a free agent. He could be an option. He wouldn't be a bad option, but I think $8 million is just a little bit too rich for the Lions. Now, this is a free agent that I kind of like. Todd Gurley. Market value at around $5 million plus. Brings some thump and is a very underrated pass catcher. Has a lot of familiarity with guys like Brad Holmes and some of the coaching staff in Detroit. Also, Jared Goff, man. So he played with him in L.A., right? So that's really a good sign right there. And he's still only 26 years old. And he could be at about, like I said, $5 million plus. It's not a bad option to have. Another free agent, Mark Ingram. A Flint native. Can he come back home? I don't know if he really want to come back home. Uh, he's familiar with Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn, our, our, our new DC. So he, he's been around those guys. On the wrong side of 30, but could bring some juice to the running back room. He's a colorful player. He's, he's out there. He's, he's loud. He's boisterous. He's, he, he's full energy. I like that about him. He's a hype man that brings some energy to the club. So why not, right? He kind of reminds me of a Todd Gurley type player skill-wise. Um, but a bit older. Price tag could be down because of his age as well. Maybe around $4 million plus. You can see where it happens there. You're not going to end up paying a lot of money for a running back, guys. You just, you, you just really don't unless he's unless he's Derrick Henry or, or, or Christian McCaffrey. We just don't have those options right now, right? But we're going to have to draft someone like that. There's another guy like free agent Mike Davis. Had a career year in Carolina after McCaffrey went down. Got ended up with 642 yards on the ground and six touchdowns, 59 catches, 373 yards and two touchdowns, total of eight touchdowns with a 3.9 yards per carry. So it was very impressive. He's 28 and could be a nice addition as well. Won't break the bank. Could probably get him cheap as well, maybe around four million plus. He might want a little bit more money now that he that he went out and did and did his thing, but he's 28. I don't think he's looking to be. Well, I don't really know what he's looking to be, but I, I, I don't think any teams are going to be looking to, to put a 28-year-old as as their starting guy, as their 1A. You know what I mean? Um, so he could probably come at about maybe $4 million plus. You might get him at $5 million plus. I think he'd be a nice addition to uh, DeAndre Swift. Now, there's a sleeper that I like. I like Carlos Hyde, 30 years old. He's one year removed from 1,000-plus thousand thousand yards on the ground with Houston. Uh, has never really been a receiving back in his career. But yeah, but he caught 59 passes in 2017 with the 49ers. That, that was kind of shocking. I do remember that year. Him being the guy that really never caught any balls, but he ended up catching almost 60 balls as a 49er. And he also has a 4.1 yards per carry through his, uh, his seven-year career. So he could come real cheap at around maybe $2 million plus, $3 million. You just never know. There's a lot of options there. And then maybe they can even go after a letter for net, but he's going to be expensive as well. Um, he's probably going to be about eight, nine million dollars. So, I kind of putting those kind of guys to the side. 
I don't expect them to be paying over like five million dollars for a running back to come in. And I expect like a one, two, two year deal for some of these guys. So we'll see you there. Um, now some running backs in the draft, guys. I do like a few guys. And like I said before that I've that talked about in the videos, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to really get into the, like, the info that I've been looking up when it comes to these college guys. Like I'm not going to be divulging anything just yet. I'll just be talking about them really fast. Because uh, I will be coming with a mock down the road. Probably within the next few weeks, I'd say. Probably in the March. Probably in the March, I'll get into a little more detail about the players that, that I've been looking at and stuff like that. And um, there's a lot of stuff that I have to look at. There's a lot of stuff I have to read. A lot of video that I have to watch. So, But I will talk about a few guys very sparingly. Najee Harris could be an option, but probably going to be a second-round guy. 6'2", 230 pounds. He's a load. Um, Kenny Gainwell from Memphis could slip into the third. He's pretty versatile running back. He's got, you know... Got some, got some juice there. And then there's there's Kylan Hill from Mississippi State, 5'11", 215. Got some character issues. Um, could maybe slip into the fourth round. That, that could be a guy that could pair up with Swift. R Ramondre Stevenson is a guy that we talked about on the OPP on the One Pride Cup uh, podcast before. He's huge. He's six foot, 232 pounds. Impressed at the Senior Bowl with his uh, receiving skills, and which was a concern. So he could, he could probably go into the third or fourth. If he can catch the ball in the backfield, that's that's even more impressive for a big fella. And then to round it off, guys, I got guys like the combo running back duo out of North Carolina. Uh, Michael Carter, 5'9", 200. Better receiver, in my opinion. Or they can go Javante Williams, who's 5'10", 220. Absolute load of a man who thrives on contact. And has a little bit of receiving skills. Now it could go that, and then and then I gotta throw this guy in, Chuba Hubbard, Canadian. What's up, my man? Oklahoma State or Trey Sermon, Raheem Boyd, a couple big boys as well. A lot of options on running back this year, guys. But the main the main thing I'm trying to drive at is that we really need to get DeAndre Swift some help. He's got a little bit banged up uh, last year, a little bit banged up with some concussion. Concussion. I think he had a leg problem going on too, and he never really missed any time at, uh, at Georgia. But he he was always kind of nicked up. He was always kind of nicked up. Didn't miss too much time. He might have missed a couple games here and there. I don't have his stats on me right now, but from what I can remember, um, when he was drafted by the Detroit Lions, and me looking at his stats and and his his uh, his medical history, from what I can remember is that he always he did have surgery in college, but he didn't really miss a lot of time. Uh, but he's always he always had kind of a problem. He always kind of nicked up here and there. But he didn't miss a lot of time in college. And he was he was kind of a fresh running back coming in because it was like it's it, it's running back you over at Georgia. So they have a lot of good running backs over there. Always have, always will. So when he came in Detroit Lions, he was kind of fresh, you know what I mean? But he was still banged up. He still had some banged up. So he's got the potential to get hurt. And like I said, guys, the workhorse running back days they're done. It's 2021, guys. We don't see that much anymore. Uh, these, these these kids need help. And it's, and it's just a few guys I named. There's a whole bunch more guys that I'm going to go through eventually. But those are the guys that I kind of like, you know, like, like a Todd Gurley and Mark Ingram and Mike Davis from Carolina. Maybe a, a Kenyon Drake might be a little bit too expensive. Leonard Fournette, maybe a little bit too expensive. But you never know. They might bring in those guys for a one-year deal, you know. Still think I would still like to see them draft a running back, but not until like the third, fourth round. Like guys like Najee Harris and guys like Travis Etienne, those kind of guys are going to get drafted late first, early second. But the, you never know, they could slip, but I doubt it. But all in all, get DeAndre some help. He needs help, man. He needs help. And Dan Campbell has made it clear, and Deuce Staley has made it clear that he wants to he, that they want to run the football. And there's a lot of things to go into that. It's not just a good good running back. It can't be just a good running back. There's a lot of things that go into that. O-line, defense, holding leads, scoring. It's a, there's a whole, it's, a, it's an art form. It's a pure art form running the football, I think, guys. It, it is. It, it, it's really an art form, and you have to know when to do it, and there's a time to do it. Uh, it's really that simple it's really that simple, but it can be, if it's used properly and it's, it's utilized in the proper way, sky's the limit. But that's it, guys. Get DeAndre Swift some help. 
and we can run the football, and that's just a few options, guys. Thanks for the listening in. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button on the bottom right. Hit the notification bell. Get all my videos. Like and comment. It's all about the likes and the comments. Um, that's what helps out my channel a lot. Thanks, guys. Let's go, Lions. Boom. The draft is coming. Bam.